In preparation for rendering, we're going to export all the geometry to the USD uh, file format, that's Universal Scene Description, which gets used in the Solaris context of Houdini um, to render to Karma. So we're going to go first into the Bomb Geo, and we're just going to set up the network here because when we want to put a texture on this, we're going to need some UVs on this before we uh, put that out. So let's press S and let's take this and let's add some edges. So we're going to double, go edge selection, double click on it to get that there. Double click, shift, double click to get there. Um, now we're going to shift, double click inside. We're going to have to do these four four edges. You can barely see them in there, but they're they're where the um, they're where this the inside touches the bottom. And we're going to do the same with the outside. Double click, double click. So we have to do the four sides, uh, even though it's round. Um, the four sides matter. So this creates the edges that we need for our to split up our. So we're going to create a group out of that. It's an edge group. And we're going to call it UV Edges. And if we need to go back and, let's say we didn't get something quite right, we can come back and make a change to it. But it looks like we got the, the pieces that we need for this example. So the next thing um, we're going to do is Tab UV Flatten. And we now get two views, a UV view and a perspective view. And we can take the seams and go set them to UV Edges and enable manual uh, layout, turn that off. And now we're getting UVs um, looking good here. If we review this uh, with the right mouse button, we can set up a, a preview that we can look at and see what the layout's like. Um, show texture, we can turn that off. We can also turn on the texture um, that we have in, the, in the, the scene view there as well. And then as you can see, when we go back to the bomb out null, the UVs stick with the object as it gets transformed and placed up above. Now we're going to put a tab USD export in here. And uh, it's always good to give this the name you sort of want when you bring this into, um, into Solaris. So we're going to export that. Now this only needs one frame. So we're going to go slash USD slash static um, underscore bomb dot USD. So this is just, we're going to have that up to the point of the explosion so that we don't see any of the cracks uh, from the fracturing until the, um, until the geometry actually explodes. So now we're going to go into the uh, fracture geometry and before we export, we need those UVs in here as well. So what we need to do is we need to resave to disk um, that RBD IO and that's going to go through and re-save using the uh, UVs that were set in the geometry that we brought in. And uh, if we go in and to see that, we're going to go tab, uh, unpack. And as you can see, when we unpack, we can now see the UVs on that geometry. And then we're going to put in an attribute delete. And we're going to get rid of a uh, primitive attribute called name. Uh, which would bring all the little pieces of separate objects into U into USD, into Solaris, and we want them to all come as a single object. And then we'll add some normals in here just to sharpen things up a little bit, and then we will do our uh, USD export and out of the end of here. And again, um, we'll go frame range. In this case, we'll do the frame range. And we're going to just rename this exploding underscore bomb and for the output file we'll go uh, slash USD slash exploding underscore bomb dot USD and that's good save to disk it's going to go off and do all the frames from 1 to 240 and later when we're Solaris we'll swap from the one bomb geometry to the other so now we're going to bring on other elements that we're going to make use of. We want a ground grid in here, so we'll take use of the one we have. Uh, again, we probably want some UVs on it uh, in case we want to texture it in some way. Uh, we're going to initialize 
that. And there's the UVs. Generally speaking, when these get put in, they come in sort of flipped with the UV project, so it it's worth going in with one of them. I think uh, one of the scales, we can go minus one, one, zero. And what we've done here is instead of uh, we've created a, a small, a smaller texture map that's going to repeat all over the surface as opposed to one that covers the whole surface. So this will be a, you can apply a repeating pattern on this. And then we'll do the USD export. And this is, again, a static object. So um, this should be easier. We don't need to do frame range. Uh, we're going to change the name of this to just say ground. And then we'll do slash USD slash ground dot USD. Good. Save to disk. That's quick and easy. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, do the fuse geometry. Now, in this case here, to do this properly, uh, we're going to use the fuse out here because this is the part that we need um, exported. So we're going to go, this will go from 1 to 240 because it happens before the explosion. So you can get a sense of that here. If we go back and get a feel for that. And that's good. So the steps are the same. Give it a name here, fuse. And then we can, in the export up above, um, we can do render frame range, 1 to 240. And we'll just go slash USD slash fuse dot USD. Perfect. Save to disk. It's going to think through that. We're good to go. So each of the elements, now there are other ways you can get elements into Solaris. Like you can actually grab them directly, almost like an object merge, and, and drag them over. Um, I find that, especially if you don't want to deal with mo motion, if you want motion blur to be a little more automatic, it's good to have the USDs saved on disk, and then you reference them in, and then the, the things like motion blur and so on works a little bit more naturally. Uh, so here we're going to do the same thing with the soot. So um, full ra frame range. Um, I'm going to call this soot underscore trail and we'll do slash USD slash soot underscore trail dot USD and save to disk. So each of the elements that we want to put into our final scene, we're, we're, we're getting them uh, spit out and cached, which also is going to make things more efficient when we want to scrub and play around while we're setting up the rendering because all of this will be set up and ready to go. And the next thing is the sparks. There they, that's what they look like right now. And we're going to go tab USD export. Actually, before we do that, we're going to do an attribute create because one of the things we need on these is uh, in order for these to render properly, they're going to need a width attribute so that these lines actually render with some sort of width. So we're going to set a value there of 0 0.0005. And once we have that, um, then we can add our USD export, tab USD export. And render frame range. slash USD slash sparks and we'll call these sparks as well and we will save the disk. That one took a little longer so we fade it out, fade it back. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in with the pyro solver and you know that happens after frame 200. So in this case here, uh, we do not need the pyro look because that's going to be recreated with the pyro so uh, shader when it gets assigned. So we're going to branch off to the USD export here and we're going to call that pyro fireball and export current frame range and slash USD slash 
pyro underscore fireball. And save to disk. And now we have all the pieces uh, ready to go. We can go into Solaris and check them out.